there are actually two pieces of legislation currently under review right now that are essential to protecting our food and water. And the first is the Agri-Resources Act. And I concur with Carl, I was deeply, deeply disappointed in the outcome of the, of the ARA review. Um, because after literally months and, and hundreds of people, including myself, um, presenting to the committee, there still is no protection in the ARA for food and water, for farmland and water. And to, ha to think that this whole thing was sparked really on the eve of the 2011 election in order to placate the people who were screaming out for this that we'll have a review and then for that review to come back and in many respects actually weaken protections for farmland and water I think is unacceptable. And to put that into perspective a little bit, Ontario on a per capita basis uses more aggregates than any jurisdiction in the world. The only place that's even close to us are, is the state of Texas. And they're actually a relatively distant second to us. So our appetite for aggregates is insatiable in this province. And we're not going to fix that unless we fix the legislation that regulates the industries. The second piece of legislation that's currently under review is the provincial policy statement, which um, oversees land use planning in the province. And again, currently right now, and I know for those of you here in Guelph, you'll hear Hugh Whiteley talk about this over and over again, there is no protection, or inadequate protection, I should say, not completely no, but inadequate protection for source water in this province. And there is no prior priority given to prime farmland or water over aggregate extraction. And that is explicitly stated right now in the PPS. And that is unacceptable and has to change. And to put that into context, only 0.5% of Ontario's entire land mass is prime farmland. So if you think about the entire province of Ontario and what it's going to take to feed ourselves and our children and grandchildren and future generations, only half of 1% of that land is prime farmland. And we don't have protections in place. And so one of the things that inspired me in the work that Carl and Danny have done is the way this has emerged, the uh, mega quarry fight has emerged into a battle called Food and Water First. And I'm proud to say I'm the first and only, I'm actually proud to say I'm the first, and I'm disappointed to say at this point I'm the only political leader in Ontario who's actually signed the Food and Water First plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. to take on the battle against the Dole Line Quarry. And I want to acknowledge really the wonderful work that Wellington Water Watchers has done on this issue. And I know there's actually one of the founders of Wellington Water Watchers is here. And I know there's people from Wellington Water Watchers here. And I also want to just acknowledge and thank Guelph City Council for standing up uh, to protect Guelph's water. And I think what we're advocating for in our petition, which is essentially what the city is advocating for, is so incredibly reasonable that I just don't understand why the Ministry of the Environment keeps dismissing us. And I've written, I'm in this letter, letter battle now. I sort of, we send our petition off and the Ministry responds, and then we collect 500 more signatures and I send another letter back and then they respond. And each time their responses get more and more dismissive of us. So I want to keep ramping up more and more <laughs> the, the fight back. Because the city's, the city's ask is so reasonable. They're just asking for the, they're not even asking for the quarry to be shut down. They're just asking for a management plan to be put in place so that Welch water is protected and the quarry operates responsibly. And they're just asking for a monitoring plan to make sure that the management plan is actually being followed properly. And they're asking that the quarry continue to pump at their historical average daily water taking rate rather than increase it because the permit they have allows them to almost double the amount of water they're taking. And 25% of wells drinking water comes from wells right around that quarry. So this is a significant, significant issue for it. And the final thing the city's asking for is that there be a financial assurances plan in place, which actually isn't too far off what Carl just talked about, a legally binding one 
that basically says if the quarry company damages Guelph's water, the company's on the hook for it, not Guelph taxpayers. And what I love about the four points is that I don't care where you are on the political spectrum, and I have literally knocked on thousands and thousands of doors in Guelph trying to collect signatures on our petition. It doesn't matter where you stand on the issue, people understand one or all four of those points. And so I'm hoping that we can take inspiration from the work that Carl and Danny and others have done to continue to push back against the Ministry of the Environment and to ensure that in the province of Ontario, we lose that international reputation that our land and water is for sale to the highest bidder. Yeah, I'm sure for that. Mm -hmm.